Hi there, I'm Rachel Baxter, and in this video, I'm going to do my best to recap a number of words the Lord has given me over the last seven years and uh, communicate the way the Lord has begun to put those words together for me and as it directly relates to the time we're, we're now living in. Um, it's, you know, early February, uh, February 12th of 2022 right now as I make this video in the evening. And in the world, uh, you know, it, it, there's a sense that we are on the brink of war. Uh, there's a sense that in the spiritual realm, the battle is just raging um, and many, many can feel it. I know me personally, our family, we've just been facing, you know, battles that we just never thought we would have to face. And um, those spiritual battles often come into this physical realm, you know, and a, a kind of key tenet I learned some time ago is that really the battle's first fought in the spirit and then it's fought in the, the physical realm. And so uh, I yeah, we're just in a battle, right? But we know that Jesus is the king and he's victorious. I don't know if you can see it. I'm actually wearing a t-shirt that the Lord had me make that says Jesus is the king. And on the back, it says the king is Lord. And um, that's the time we're living in where the world, the nations are going to know that Jesus is the king. And um, But as that happens, uh, as the truth of that um, goes forth, we will also see the Antichrist rise to power in the counterfeit that Satan has only ever been able to do is take what is good and holy and beautiful and twist it and uh, make it his own um, because of his own pride and his desire to uh, rise himself above God. So with that introduction, I'm going to jump in and try to go as quickly as possible Um I'm going to take you to my blog. Uh, I've had this blog up for a number of years, and in it I shared um, words from many years ago. And I want to start um, by sharing a word that was actually from March of 2015. And um, I'm going to minimize this here and, and jump in. So um Again, as I was stating, you know, the, the reality that it seems as though the world is at on the brink of war and, um, you know, it could, it could quiet back down. Maybe, um, maybe this won't go forward. Um, this, the tensions between, uh, Russia and the rest of the world, but Russia and especially America and our current, uh, government under Biden that is, demonstrating itself as uh, being very weak, the decision, decisions that are made and, um, you know, the history now uh, with Afghanistan and what's happened there, um, just we're not positioned in a place of power. But I want to go back to 2015 because it was seven years ago and I want to lay out for you kind of this timeline that the Lord gave me and you can draw your own conclusions. Um, I'm just a person and I'm fallible, but God is God and man, the stuff that he has spoken to me over the years, like I, you know, um, really typically when he would speak to me, I'd have no understanding of the incredible things that he was showing me. And, um, now that I've begun to see them come to pass in pretty crazy ways. So, um, I'm going to share this. So this is my blog. It's, um, scroll and fig leaf. And I'm just show you that there. Scroll and fig leaf dot WordPress is where you can find it. Let's see, I don't want to go out of there. And so um, this was a specific word on grace. And as I look over here, uh, I have a notebook next to me. Um, it's not uncommon for my computer to do strange things and for my uh, Google to just close. So that's why I have it kind of as paper as a, a backup. Um, and so this word, again, was March of 2015. And um, the the Lord was drawing my attention very profoundly to a number to the number five, even like I couldn't deny it. So I'm just going to read through it quickly. I believe the Lord does this with numbers because he wants to remind us that nothing's random. Everything under earth is under his authority. It's just another way he speaks to us, right? Because God wrote the end from the beginning. That's what we hear from Isaiah. And he lives outside of time. So um, first began waking at 5.05 each morning. Um, and this was rare for me because I would normally wake at 6. I pondered 5.05. 5. 
Then for three days in a row, I looked at my phone at exactly 555. I knew that it was not a coincidence and I pondered 555. Um, And then I came across two prophetic messages in the same day about the number five. And I'm just not going to go into detail on that. And then at the time, uh, there was... um, Lou Engel was from the founder of the call movement was speaking about the Azusa Street, Azusa Street revival, the outpouring and 110 years, which was double, double five, five, double grace. And, um, and he mentioned in a dream that the Lord had instructed him to purchase five sets of five tickets, which is 25. So anyway, five, five, five. Okay. So then yesterday in my message, I said, uh, yesterday I walked into my son's classroom to find the word grace painted blue on signs all over a table and the number five also painted in blue all along another table. And I was so excited. I asked the teacher why she chose number five. She said the Holy Spirit instructed her to do this, to start the lesson on the meaning of God's numbers in his words and kingdoms. And, um, so this was the sign that I found on the table. All right. So a number of years ago. So this was May 20, sorry, March of 2015. And if you think about five and what began five years later, what happened in our country in March of 2015, sorry, March of 2020, five years after March of 2015 in the world, but in our country, America, where I'm from, March of 2020, we saw really COVID, the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic, like go into high gear, right? So, um, you know, you can say, well, maybe that was just a coincidence, right? But I really believe the Lord was pointing me to, from that time period of of March of 2015 to March of 2020, this period of grace that God was giving us five more years to get our house in order, okay? So that's the first thing I wanted to just share with you really briefly. And then in May of 2015, the year 2015 for me, I had a lot of really incredible um, spiritual encounters with the Lord, either through dreams, through visions, or um, beginning to have angelic encounters. And so this was just a word, just, but this was a word the Lord spoke to my heart. It was not the audible voice of God. Um, And this is also um, on uh, my site here. This was from May of 2015. Just part of this I'm going to share. Um, the Lord said, um, I had asked the Lord about covenant. And this is what the Lord said. The covenant I make with you is for this generation and all generations. I am your God and you're my people. It's always been so. I bring to you peace and hope. Satan brings death and destruction. His time is almost up. The clock nears the midnight hour. I will show you many things. It's good to seek me. It's good to want to tell others. Um, and then the Lord goes on to say, your country will burn. Your country will fall. Your country will be left desolate. But my remnant will be safe in my arms. My remnant will be given the power to travel the world, offering healing in my name. My children will speak of salvation like never before. And it will be like honey to the tongue. It will be like a soft breeze to the hot laborer. So the Lord speaking of, this was the, I I really, I think the first time the Lord really spoke to me, this difficult word about our country burning our country falling and you know again think back to 2015 that wasn't a reality that we were living in and so you know that was a hard word um but over the years the lord speak uh, spoken to me many hard words <laughs> so um i'm gonna go ahead to this was still 2015 so i'm gonna stay under five under this um the banner of five years of grace here and then i'll, I'll change it but this was a word from um december 2015 this was a very profound word. Only a couple times has the Lord addressed himself this way with me. And this was, this is what I heard. The spirit of the living God comes to you, right? What I say. And when I got this word, um, this was one I actually had the opportunity to share quite a bit on different programs. And, um, anyway, it was, it was a powerful word from the Lord. And I'm going to read just part of it. Um, the Lord's talking about, do not be deceived. And he says, an event will occur that will begin World War III without debate. And there's no stopping it. All the planning and scheming has led to this. Many will lose their lives. It is important that you rest in the shadow of the Almighty, your refuge and your strength. I come to you to hearken you to listen to all that I say. The underpinnings of this attack come not from afar, but from your own shores. Do not be deceived. Trust this good word. And you I'm going to skip over that part. He's talking about darkness coming into light. Then he says, 
Let no more false flags confound you. And at the time, I had no idea what a false flag is. Now I know it's when um, something, uh, some terrible thing happens and is blamed on one party, but really another party did it for their own purposes to be to stir things up or to like to start a war. Um, the Lord said this specifically: I will put my children to all truth. Look to Miami, look to Chicago, look to San Francisco, see what is happening. The wheels have been set in motion and they shall not be stopped. So that was the first time the Lord talked to me about World War III. And he said, there will be a false flag, but don't let that deceive you. And watch these three cities, Miami, Chicago, San Francisco. So I, you know, I have over the years watched them. So again, this was, um, It'll, you know, it'll be seven years ago, this, this coming December. It'll be seven years from this word. So, you know, if you think about those cities today, Miami, Chicago, San Francisco, and what I can say from that time back then to now is the crime, the um, immorality, the la- just the value system, um, and I have been to all those cities. I haven't been to San Francisco for a long time. I was recently to Chicago and Miami. Um, we know Chicago is like become the you know gang death capital of the world. Um, but I don't think that it's just about a degradation of society. I believe we'll specifically see something in those cities. And the reason I'm sharing this, I'm kind of leading up to what I'm going to share here at the end, is I believe the Lord for me, the way he works for me is He's um, he's laid down a path He's laid a framework. He, I, you know, he's built my trust over the years. The things that he would speak to me that, you know, just there was like, what? I, I don't know about that, Lord. He would talk to me about, you know, other countries. And and um, I've just seen the way that things seem to be coming together like he said they would. And again, I just, my, my caution is that, you know, the Bible is the, the inerrant word of God. It's, it's perfect. And anything that I would ever say or share that I know comes from the Lord would need to line up with scripture. So, um, these things he's spoken to me, um, you can't go to the Bible and say, well, where's Chicago, Miami, and San Francisco. You can't do that. Right. But so it's more like, it's more saying, okay, Lord, we'll have to see, we'll see if what the Lord told me is, is what we see happen. And, but why does he tell us what's going to happen before it happens? It's so that we would believe so that others, non-believers would believe. And so, um, at this time, again, nearly, you know, over six years ago, my children are asleep, fast asleep, but they will awaken by the shaking. One cannot sleep when all things around you begin to shake. The earth shakes, the ground beneath your feet shakes, the economies of the earth shake, the militaries and the governments shake, the skies shake. Day by day, more and more will awaken to the reality of the days you've been chosen to live. Make no mistake, it's no coincidence you're alive today. The landmines have been set in place. Watch your step. Keep your eyes on me that you would not stumble. Your freedom shall be questioned, and it shall even be taken from you. Yet in me, you are free. Your freedom grows as you see that you're not of this world, but made for my kingdom, which shall come. Wait just a little longer and you will see the glory I will set before you as I live and love among you. You know, whenever the Lord speaks to me, even these really difficult words, he always encapsulates it in love and hope. And that's one way we can know it's from him. Okay, so um, it's talking about World War III, watching particular cities. Right now, we're in a place where many have said, well, World War III is actually going on. It's just in the shadows. It's the, um, you know, it's the the power grid situation. It's the, the internet hacking. It's the, you know, it's all those kinds of things. It's not the out and out war. But we know that that will come. Okay, so I'm going to zoom way ahead here. Skip some time here. Um, and now I'm going to maybe actually bring it up for you so you can see it here. Let's see if I can find it. Um, I think it'd be here. Yeah. So um, it's interesting. Um, so this was a word from April of 2017. Okay. So this was, this was now coming up on five years ago in April. It will be five years. Okay. And I'm not going to read the entirety of this word, but you can see the title. The final countdown has begun. So in April of 2022, it will have been five years from this word. Okay. (coughs) Excuse me.
Um, so I'm just going to scroll down and decide where to start, okay? The day draws near. It's so very near. You can feel the closeness of the hour that will come upon you like a thief in the night. So there's some scripture here the Lord laid down for my heart. Um, so here, I'm going to start here. Come out of this world. Oh, time is short. Stop wasting time and do what I created you to do. The clock nears the midnight hour and yet you slumber. Go to sleep then and never wake up for the time will pass you by. So he's calling me and he's calling us to action. So here he gives a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. The countdown. The final countdown has begun. So when the Lord spoke that, I, I didn't have a context. I didn't I didn't realize the, what, that first message I gave you about five and that we were going to have five years. Because again, this was a couple years ago, right? This was um, almost five years ago. And so you can see that he gave another five. This was two years after he, he spoke to me. March of 2015. Now I think this is April of 2017. And so he's saying five years from that point is what I believe. The dress rehearsals are over and this is the real show. You're about to see the pages of revelation unfold in front of your eyes, sleeping or awake. You do not believe me? See this. The sign I've placed in the heavens shall come to pass and then you will know that the season of the end, the season of your forefathers spoke about is upon you. And he was Speaking of Revelation 12, the first parts of that verse talk about the woman clothed with the sun and the moon and the stars, the 12 stars over her head. We saw that sign come to pass in September 23rd of 2017. And so that's what the Lord's pointing to. So in this word, the Lord says, North Korea, and, and this was a time when there was a lot going on with North Korea. North Korea, don't fear North Korea, fear me. Fear the great and terrible day of the Lord, for it shall come to pass, just as I said. Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Turkey, all trembling pots nearly boiling over from the heat of my indignation, the Lord says. America, land of the free? No, that season has come to pass. You've taken my gift of freedom and spit in disgust. You've ravaged my children and caused death of mind, body, and soul. You've done this, O oh, children of Satan. You lost sight of who I created you to be, the true purpose of this nation. You turned away from me and have chosen a life of sin. What once was will be no more. The last great nation to come to be to come to be shall be the first of the great nations to fall at the time of the end. You will be ravaged by your enemies just as you have killed your own babies day after day. Then there will be blood in the streets as there has never been before in this nation. <coughs> of course, now I've got a tickle in my throat. Mothers and fathers will cry out for the dead. Children will weep parentless. You will feel the tears that I have wept for generations now in this nation, but you will not find comfort. Your, your, money, your worship, you worship money and it will fail you. Your stock market will collapse under the weight of the deception that runs rampant. Your banks will fail you. You cling to money as if you can, if can save you, but it can't. It will fail you when you feel you need it most. I'm going to just finish up here the next couple paragraphs. Be assured, O children of the one true God, there will be a transfer of wealth, but it will be supernatural. It will confound those of the earth, for they who are of this earth will not be able to make sense of it. I will have my treasure, and it will be for my glory alone. I will build my mountains on the earth. I will build everyone, even as the mountains of this earth under Satan are torn down stone by stone and brick by brick, not by human hands. The fall is coming this fall. Yes, I say it. This fall, the mighty fall will begin in earnest and there will be no slowing. Just as I have said through my prophets for thousands of years, it will happen. So the Lord's saying, so first of all, just to go back again, this is April 2017. So I believe April, the spring, April of 2022, which is the time of the Lord's spring feasts, God has spring feasts, which are we, we can read about in Leviticus 23, that Jesus perfectly fulfilled to the day and the hour in the moment, okay? These, these dress rehearsals that were meant to prepare the people of God, who they, the Jews in Jerusalem, when Jesus was crucified on the cross and died, literally it was the time of their Passover lamb being slaughtered, but they missed it. So now here we are, nearly 2,000 years later, okay? And the, the Lord has a plan. He has a calendar. Everything's going to happen according to his plan and his calendar. And so 
I'm just, this, this spring is this anticipation. Jesus, I believe, will return in the fall in some year, in some future year. Now, I don't believe it will be this year because I believe we have to see what the book of Revelation said would happen, happen. And really, there's even many, many prophecies in the Old Testament need to, that need to come to pass. One of them is the remnant of God coming out of the nations where they've been scattered and returning to God and to, to Jerusalem and to his, his, his self. But um, others, the tribulation, okay? So I believe this fall could be the start of the tribulation, okay? The seven-year tribulation, it could be. Um, so it will happen in the fall. We know that. And then there will be a three and a half year period and a three and a half year period before we see the return of Jesus. So this fall, what I believe the Lord is saying is he gave a countdown, five, four, three, two, one. That was a countdown from April, April to May to June, July, August, September. Okay. That's so September, October, which is the timing of the fall feast. They happen in September, October. It's according to God's calendar, the seventh month. Okay seventh month and the first day is when that those they they begin um and so also it was a countdown from 2017 to 2018 19 20 21 22 so here we are i believe that as we come into the spring months of 2022 we're going to see another shift and as we become come into the fall months of 2022 um that september october time frame the feast of the lord we're going to see another shift and the Lord's been speaking to me about this fall of our country. We've already seen it happen in a, in, in a slowly progressive way in terms of our value systems, in terms of our character integrity, in terms of the power that we wield in the world. You know, we're no longer the most powerful nation in the world. That's the reality and the truth. Okay, so I want to keep moving, but I wanted this, I wanted to, to point you to this too as a timepiece. Um, I'm, I've got a, another word the Lord gave me, um, kind of another, actually it was a dream and it's, it's in here. Um, it's on my, the scroll and fig leaf, but basically what the Lord did was he showed, uh, he gave me a dream of the numbers two, three, nine, two, three, nine. And there was this white bearded figure in the dream. And I had the dream all night long, two, three, nine. When I woke in the morning, um, the first thing the Lord said to me, he asked me a question. He said, when did Noah enter the ark? Okay. So what we learned was that Noah entered the ark in the second month and the 17th day. Okay. But he was invited into the ark on the second month and the 10th day. Okay. So um, a good friend of mine, Josh, pointed this out to me. So I'm just giving you an example of another time the Lord's given me timing and what happened, okay? So not to confuse you. So this is just kind of I'm giving you a, an example of how trustworthy God, God is and his perfect timing that everything happens under. So in 2019, uh, the second month and the 17th day of the month was uh, a day in May. I, I don't know what it is now because I, I wasn't planning to speak on that and the Lord's moving on my heart. So I think it might've been May 3rd, but I'm not sure. So, um, when you count from the second, uh, second month to the 17th day and you add 239 days to it, you come to January 16th of 2020. Okay. So, and then if you back up and say, you know, what happened a week before that, when, if Noah was given one week's warning, he was told on the 10th and he entered the ark on the 17th, what happened on the 9th that was confirmed on the 16th. So on January of 2020, okay, January 2020, we know that, uh, again, COVID had begun in, um, in China. It had begun coming into our country. Um, it was actually that the, the timing of the first death um, that was attributed to COVID happened January 9th. And on the 16th, the pandemic, was it, like the, 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 um, Think of the words, the, the way that they spoke about COVID-19 changed to being a pandemic. So anyway, I have more detail on that, but that's one way the Lord was like, and in December of 2019, the Lord was, was pointing my, pointing my attention to, uh, 2020, that January of 2020, we were going to see this begin. Um, January 17th of 2020, we were going to see this begin. Okay. So Anyways, just an example of how the Lord uses dates. I am not a date setter. I'm not trying to set dates, but God has a calendar and he says, we are children of darkness. We're children of light that we would know what season we're living in. And that's why I think that's important. Okay. So 
I'm going to speed ahead now to November of 2020. This was right before the election. Okay. This was um, November 1st of 2020. Um, no, I'll have to scroll down and see the way that I did this. Maybe. Yeah, here it is. Okay. So on November 1st of 2020, before the election. So we didn't know what was going to happen with the election. Okay. I'm going to read just again a part of this. Um, Trust me, I am here. I am speaks to you for all to hear who, who have ears to hear the spirit of the living God. So again, he speaks to as himself as the spirit of the living God. And that's, this was an experience I had with the Lord where um, I felt overcome by the Lord. I was um, very much in awe of God. Um, I was trembling. Um, it was a very deep, uh, heavy word. Okay. The Lord said, trust me, I'm here. I am speaks to you. Okay. So trust these good words, not because they're easy to hear because they're not, but because the spirit within you agrees. Come, I whisper, partner with me in this grave hour, this great hour of judgment that has come upon your nation, America, land of the free and home of the brave. Bravery will be called upon for the times that are ahead. Let your faith rest in me and I will give you strength, the strength you need for the battle at hand. I've shown you the battle that rages for souls to take them to heaven to be with me or to send them to hell for forever separated from me. This battle rages in the heavenly realms and also in the earthly dimensions. The war has begun. I say the war has begun. What war you ask? The war, the war to end all wars. The war has begun. It is wagered in hidden places this day, but its very nature is to grow, 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 to drag all human flesh into itself. Do you not feel the hooks that reach for you to pull you into battle? The hooks of this war hide in deception, hidden under layers of deals made with winks and handshakes between powerful men who long ago sold their souls for a pound of flesh. Now I see it rotting and hanging out of their mouths and off their bodies, oozing and smelling of sulfur. And when he said that, like my stomach literally got like sick. The, so the war that rages silently will soon come into the light. Attack, attack, they will say. Attack, attack. Where will we hide ourselves? They will ask, but they won't ask me. This is the time for my people to seek me like they've never sought me before. Seek me and you will find me. Knock and the door of shelter will be open to you and your family. So the Lord's saying, like, we're going to hear attack, attack. And those that don't know the Lord aren't going to know what to do. Those of us who know the Lord, we, we need to... We need to listen. We need, first of all, we need to hear it, know his voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. We need to practice hearing his voice. We need to know it's him. And then in those, those moments, we need to be our hearts prepared to do whatever he says, even if it doesn't make sense. We need to do what he says. Um, and then I felt like I was led to John 1, 7 to 8. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So I literally went to that scripture and read it. Then the Lord continued speaking. I ran. The leopard strikes its prey. Out of a position of stillness and silence, it waits patiently. Then at just the right time, when its prey is most vulnerable, it leaps. Its mouth opens and closes upon the neck of its prey so that the neck is broken. It, its claws dig deeply into the shoulders of its prey to pull it to the down to the ground. As its teeth sink deep into the tissue, muscles and tendons, blood springs forth. As the blood drains out, the prey is found weak and incapacitated. It is in this confusion the leopard takes its prize. Meat, fresh meat, is its prize. So I want you to know, when the Lord spoke those things, I had no idea about how a, a leopard actually attacks or kills its prey. I could probably picture it and think about it. But after this, I actually went and researched and this is exactly what happens, what the Lord says, the way that it um, breaks the neck and the blood. Anyways, it sounds gory, but so this is what the Lord is saying. He's saying, watch, I ran. And just to really think about what is that saying, watching out of stillness and silence, waiting for its prey to be most vulnerable. Okay. Um, and then the Lord speaks about China. So first I ran, then China, China, the leopard, the leopard's partner stands ready for once the leader is incapacitated, it can have its way with the prey's pack. Okay. So, um, this again was November, 2020. We didn't know that Trump Biden, we didn't know election. We didn't, we didn't know that. 
Um, you know, of course, I could understand that, you know, China is always someone that's, especially in 2020. Um, so I don't think it takes, you know, like a profound understanding to know we, that China is a threat to us. But the Lord first spoke about China, Iran and then spoke about China and China being Iran's partner. Now, I don't, I don't even know if that, that, if we know that, do we know that? I don't know that China is Iran's partner, but basically China is going to, what this, when I read this, what I hear is that, uh, some kind of a deal has been made and that China is going to allow Iran to strike its prey. Now, is that Israel? Because I think that's its primary prey, but we know that they, they speak chant death to America. We know that uh, America is also a, um, adversary of Iran. Iran has deep-seated people, the, the leaders of Iran, maybe not the people, but have deep-seated hatred towards us. So um, is there some kind of a deal where Iran will um, will take its prey, will strike first, and then China will come? It says once the leader is incapacitated, it can have its way with the prey's pack. Now, it could also be that um, if America was attacked, we are a leader and once America's out of the way, uh, it makes it a lot easier for China or other countries to have its way. So I don't know. I can't say for sure. You can read it for yourself and decide what you think it means. Um, so Iran, China, and then Russia. Like the vulture who circles overhead waiting its turn to dine upon the bloody carcass, there is plenty of meat left to satisfy. Trust me when I say that a death blow is coming, but it will not come all at once. So it's not like America is going to fall in a day. Not here, not now, not in this timing. It may be that biblically there's a period of time within the tribulation where uh, America will fall in a day. That's not where we are in the timeline. Um, redemptive judgment has been prepared for a stiff, necked people, a lukewarm people who prefer to, to prefer their cake and to eat it too. So the Lord, he loves us. He redemptive judgment means he wants to draw us back to himself. I firmly believe the people of America are God's people. We are his children. In fact, I believe, and I just wrote a book on this that I'm, that's, um, you know, been published and we're going to start releasing it, but that America is the fulfillment of the promises God made to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jacob to Joseph and Joseph to his sons, to his son, specifically Manasseh. And so biblically, I believe the people of America and all of our melting pot and all of that, this, this place of where this, we have a birthright that God intended for us. And yet, like you've heard me read in some of these words, we've fallen so far from God's intention. And so, but we are his people and he wants to draw us back to himself. And so he will use redemptive judgment. That's what shaking is about is redemption. So, um, the Lord talked about, um, the election. Um, and, and then actually I want to do, do, so I saw two angelic figures come and stand in front of me. And this is what they spoke about our nation. Your nation, America is a part of my house, the house of Israel. You are children of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. You are, I have plans for you, but first my children must be shaken awake by the tumult of the storm that is so close. They will not be able to sleep any longer. I told you the storm will rage on your border and within your land. No region will be immune from the shaking. Okay, so the Lord talks about it, the prodigal son and the preparation, you know, of the bride. So, okay, lastly, okay, I think this is lastly. So, um... I'm going to scroll up now and look at this word I got. This was after the election had been spoken of, whatever. Um, let me make sure you can see this. So this was 11-11 of 2020. And this was 400 years to the day, according to our calendar, that the Mayflower Compact had been signed. Okay. And so I encourage you to, to read this, um, but I'll, I'm going to try to keep this brief just so that this isn't too long. Um, so this was, the Lord woke me at 4 a.m., which isn't uncommon, told me to write. I got out of bed. For great is thy reward for those who rest in me, for those who put their trust in me, for those who are faithful with what I have given them. Great is thy reward. So the drums of war are beating. They are quiet amidst the uproar of your failed election, but they beat. Other nations hear them. There is a battle cry whispered in hidden places. America, not so strong anymore. America, distracted by internal strife. 
America divided. America weary from an internal battle, not prepared for an external one. America weary from the plague. You have made room in your heart to hear the impossible. Now you must make room in your mind for the improbable. I am the God of bad odds. Though the odds be a million to one, I am that one. Nothing's impossible for me. So then he talks about the, the plans for the rebuilding of the third temple. Um, he talks about the legacy um, and why he's speaking to me this. And then here's what I really want to share. In the last word, you heard the Lord speak about Iran, then China, then Russia. Okay. And that was just, just to kind of keep that in mind. Here the Lord is specifically speaking about Russia. So this was, again, 11-11-2020. Um, so you will see something of surprise. Russia is going to blow her trumpet. She's posturing. This is what proud nations do who do not bow their knee to me. She will signal her intent. Watch. I'm like, I said to the Lord, why is this important, Lord? Aren't countries always doing this to each other, right? Um, he allows me to ask dumb questions. So the Lord says this, what you will see it is that she intends to take what is not hers to take. This is how world wars get started. One nation decides that the environment is right to do what they purposed in their heart long ago. They wait patiently, watching for the right time, and then it comes and they believe they're ready to move forward. This is what you'll see. You see when America, my seat of power, is being unseated before your eyes. Do not be surprised by instability that arises and spreads across the globe. Your nation has been a restraining power to evil because though it was not without mixture, the balance between good and evil rested towards good. Now in your time, you're seeing the balance of power move towards evil. It's been inching that way for generations and now the scale has tipped. This is what you're seeing. Okay. Your nation is more vulnerable than you know. Be ready and vigilant. Rest in me. Listen to me and I will protect you and lead you to my places of protection and provision prepared before. The, before. This is a time in the history of my creation that's unparalleled. It's a time of Joseph's, a time of Moses, and a time of Joshua's and David's all combined. So um, the Lord talks about the uh, the agreement, the Mayflower Compact, Compact and he said, I kept my part of the agreement to be with you as a people, to lead you and protect you, to bless you and cause you to prosper. Have you kept your part of the agreement? Many of my people have, but as a nation, you've fallen short of what you could have been. As men chose greed and power, they forsook the true blessing of this land, that this land was meant to be for freedom and liberty in me. And the Lord said on that day, on 11, 11, 2020, I declare this day the agreement null and void. The contract I made with this nation, I fulfilled but you did not. Now I nullify it. I tear it up. I say to you today on 11-11, it's time for my people who are called upon my, who call upon my name and who choose to follow me to come out of this broken and depraved system. When one thing ends, another, when one thing's, when one thing ends, another begins. This is the order of things. It is the time of the fulfillment of my promise made to Daniel. And then if you, if you know of Daniel 2, just talking about in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which won't be destroyed and won't be left to another people. And in Isaiah 11, 11, we read, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, and then Egypt and Pathos, Pathros and Cush and Elam and Shinar, and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. So um, I think I'm going to stop there. And um, because that's a lot, isn't it? That's a lot. And so... That's a handful of words the Lord has spoken to me over the last seven years. And I kind of laid out for you this um, from 2015 to 2020 and we, what we saw come to pass from 2017 now to 2022, this five-year period. And I have a, a sense in my spirit that we're just on the cusp of, um, of seeing these things, uh, America, go from the land that I've always known, a land of the free, We've seen more frequent, uh, freedoms taken from us the last two years under the pandemic than ever in my lifetime. Um, but I believe more is ahead. I believe we are vulnerable. I believe that um, as believers, as Christians, what we need to be doing is praying. And you might say, well, pr what does prayer do? Maybe you've never seen prayer do incredible things. I have, and yet I don't pray nearly enough. I really don't. I'm convicted. I need to pray more. I need to pray for my family. I need to pray for my neighbors. I need to pray for our city. I live in the heart of, of America. 
I need to pray for um, for our country, but I need to pray for the people of God to rise up to be who He made us to be, and to be willing to go anywhere and do anything, and not hold on to the things that we've been so blessed to have all of these years of our lives living in America, the land of the free, because I believe that's about to change in profound ways. So um, in that, there's incredible hope. We have the Lord. Like he said, he's the God of, of unbelievable odds, right? There's nothing the Lord can't do. And I believe he's prepared us. He's told us what's going to happen before it happens so that we would know we'd be ready. I would just say, let's be ready. Let's be ready to do whatever the Lord asks us to do, whether that's to stay whether that's to get on our knees, whether that's to go, um, uh, whether that's to, to battle in the spiritual realms. And when I'm talking about battling, that's where I'm talking about battle is in the spiritual realms. Um, because we know we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against those powers and principalities and high places. And so that's where our battle begins and ends is in the spiritual realm. So th- with that, I hope that was a blessing to you. And I really had felt a strong uh, urge in my spirit to to share this again really had been in my heart for a number of days to just get this this word out there. So I bless you and I thank you so much for your time. Take it all to the Lord in prayer. Thank you.